I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. And you'll need a little bit of equipment today. A couple of foam pads, a bolster and a belt. You can substitute other household pieces of equipment for these if you haven't got yoga equipment. Okay, and we're coming into a pose called Supta Baddha Konasana. Now, we're not using the bolster behind the spine, but you may need to have the bolster underneath the feet if you've got really stiff hips. So we will just show, just very briefly, um, that this is a really nice way to relax those hips and the pelvis if you find it really challenging to come into the classic pose of um, Supta Balakanasana. So <laughs> Leo's just lying there having a lovely time, but she's still come out of this. <laughs> so, okay. Now, the next action that we want to show is holding on to those ankles. So the fronts of the lower leg and then coming into the action. You can see that Leo lifts the body to take those feet together. Not everybody will have to do that. I certainly need to do it, but this is Supta Baddha Konasana, and it's a really nice pose to just get some length in that front body and to energize the back. Now, if this is too tricky, then you can let go of those frontal shins and just, as you can see, slide the legs a little bit forward. So you've got three options there. Um, so this is a soft, really nice soft option if you've got really stiff hips, then don't avoid yoga. If you've got stiff hips, then that's the very um, good reason to be practicing. But use some support, this would be fine. If you've got quite flexible hips and long arms, then you can hold on to the feet. Or if you're sort of kind of in between, then you can let the feet slide. And you want to stay in this position just to open the groins and to be there for a little while. Softening the front body to back body and just letting the body open for just a few moments. So you may remember practicing this in the full um, sequencing on day seven. So you can stay in this a little bit longer today because actually we're just passively releasing. So just let the whole body just, just become weighted. Um, so that you can use that weight to open those inner thighs and the lower back. Okay, so once you have um, passively extended in this pose, then bring your thighs together. But once you see the video, you can stay in this for a little bit longer once you know the three poses. So from here, we're going to come into a Janu Shishasana action. So we're going to use the bolster for this. And the reason for using the bolster is because those of you with stiff hips, this really does give a lot of support on the pelvis. So when you're here, you're going to start from down, down. So you can see Leo's moving that buttock flesh out and back. And sitting up, rolling those shoulders back and down and lifting up. So before we go any further, you have to see that this Dandasana is really steady, steadfast, strong, strong legs extending into the heels. All of these actions need to be um, practiced. Okay, so bending your left leg out to the side. You can see here that Leo is just getting a little bit of space in her legs because it's quite a challenging action. And you can see that a lot of the thighs supported on the bolster, and this is really important if you have stiffness in your hips. It's a really good way of working. And then we're just going to use the belt around the foot. Now, this is an option for if you've got stiff hips, but also a really nice option if you want to start to work on your hips and get a little bit more action. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to let go of this belt and then sit a little bit further back onto the support, a little bit to the, 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 the left side, yeah, that's it. Now you can see that this action is a little bit wider and more of the thighs supported 
on the bolster. Now if the thigh is still lifting then you might want to put a blanket underneath um, between the back of the thigh and the bolster itself but this will help you to um, extend quite nicely because you want to get the length in the groins. So it certainly gives you a little bit more of an open action. So it may be that this is how you work in your Janus Shishasana. If you're working on the floor, then we're just going to show you that action. You're working on the floor, then see that you are extending the legs. And then as you can see, as Leo grabs that calf, just have a look at how she rolls that calf up towards her so that rolls actually towards the shin and as you can see she's coming into this position now whichever pose you're practicing reach up with those arms and extending up and then hinge forward and catch the foot or the belt depending and once you've got hold of that foot it's not about coming forward it's about Pulling that thigh right back into the socket. Now right back into the socket, bend the elbows, and then just soften the head down. So we've got to be mindful that actually we're working really strongly and getting that extension through the body. If you find that you need to have a little bit of support, maybe a blanket, or even I've got a foam pad here, I can just pop onto the lower shin to rest that forehead and, and then release it. So you can stay in this pose a little bit longer um, and just start to unfold the body. We're going to come for the other side now. So we're going to do the right side. So if you're using the props then just follow us with the props. You can see Handle those lower legs with care, as you can see Leo is practicing in this way. And then lifting up, reaching those arms up. And then see if you can keep that connection and hold on to the foot. You can see here Leo's going a little bit more, just holding on to the palms. If you're holding on to the belt, then this is fine too. Don't worry about holding on to the belt. Some of our best practices are when we take ourselves back. So we're not striving constantly, but we're just really being connected. And that's really lovely. Um, but of course, if you want to hold on to the foot, then do so and extending the front of the body. You see Leo's going to come into this action now and get the whole action and releasing the head okay and then release it and again do have your own timings it may be that you can stay in this pose for a little bit longer and that's fine we're coming to our next pose now and that is Ardha Matsi and Drasana we're going to use um, these two foam pads and we're going to have also this bolster just behind Leo so she's got something to put her hand on to when she comes into the twist but it may be that you've got a brick hanging around and if you do then by all means um, use a brick instead so we're going to start in Nagasana again so you'll be getting quite familiar with this drawing back of the buttock flesh so a really good habit to get into and to train the body and sit up really nice and tall. So we're coming into a modified version of this. Ardha Matsu and Drasana do have a tutorial on it, on the classic pose, so do take a look at that. But we're coming into this modified version because this version of the pose is uh, really quite interesting and you can feel lots of different extensions through the front of the body. Now come into a Virasana leg with your left leg and be sure that you're taking those toes and foot directly back, directly back. Now I must mention if this is um, quite difficult, you've got knee difficulties and you always raise the platform, then bend in the straight leg into Marashyasana and lifting up. Already it's really very nice and extended. 
Then take in the right leg over the left and hold it. And bringing that leg, you can see Leo's bringing it towards her. It's really good for the hips, this action. And then just placing the inside of the upper arm into the body and pulling that, that thigh towards you. And then see, can you take your hand round? Now, for those of you who can go that little stage further, then slide the upper arm in front of the thigh and get a little bit more traction as you get that turn in action. So it's a really strong twist. So do practice this one, but it's so nice to do it. It's a real rinse in action of the abdomen and the upper abdominal area. And then releasing and strengthening the legs. So just give yourself a few moments lifting up. So now we're going to bend the right leg and taking the left leg over the right. So again, do be sure you're getting that really nice lift. So we come for that twist again. First is the hook of the arm. Yes, and you're getting that pulling. You can see really nicely here that Leo's demonstrating this really well, extending up. And then slide that upper arm in front and get that turn in action. Release the shoulders down. So if you find this really challenging, go back to the first action, or even we're going to just demonstrate taking the palm to the shin. So if you found that the first two stages are really difficult, then do come into this action. It's always a starting point for everybody. And then releasing. Now straighten the legs into Dandasana and lifting up. So by all means, do um, look at the video and practice these poses. You can practice them several times and um, soon we'll be putting out another long sequence in a few days. So I hope you enjoyed those poses. There's some challenging actions there. So um, don't get disheartened if they're a little too uh, difficult for you at this stage. Just keep working at them and work at the standing poses. Go back again to the previous um, days and do some more of those actions and you'll find that doing other poses will increase your ability to do these more challenging actions. Yes, they certainly will. So keep watching and keep practicing. Thank you for joining us today. Namaste.